Welcome to Babblecom 5. This is episode 19 of season 2 of Babylon 5, Divided Loyalties. Delenn and Sheridan are getting their personalised copies of Universe Today. Interesting that you have to recycle your old paper copy first. Mimbari don't have a concept of the press, but following her experience in And Now for a Word, Delenn has started to read the news, having previously been told only what she needs to know, it seems. Now, she also uses the paper to try and find out more than she needs to know about Minbar, and faster than she normally gets told. On Mars, Derek and Lee meet in what looks like a sewer or maintenance tunnel of some sort. Lee is wounded and staggering, but has got the information he was hunting for. He entrusts Derek with a data crystal to get to Babylon 5, saying they're in danger. Derek is a ranger. Back on the station, Sheridan is missing trees in the public toilets. What he and Garibaldi are actually doing is checking for listening devices and ears before having one of their anti-conspiracy chats. Garibaldi has clearly floated the idea of bringing Talia into their circle, as she is of course a very handy lady to have around when you're trying to get to the truth, being a telepath. Sheridan acknowledges this and notes that she was upset by the death of the president too. Garibaldi will set up a meeting in a few days. Ivanova and Talia are having breakfast together, both laughing about how long it's taken them to get to this point, given their very tense beginnings. They now seem to be genuine friends, and although Ivanova is called up to C and C, the conversation ends with Ivanova offering Talia a place to stay overnight in her quarters, owing to maintenance being carried out on Talia's. Opportunity knocks, perhaps? The ship Ivanova was called to look at is just inert, having come through the jump gate, carrying carbon scoring on its hull that suggests it's seen combat. Not a type we've seen before. It's brought into the station. The single life form on board turned out to be none other than Lita Alexander, the station's original commercial telepath, who we met in the gathering. Garibaldi recounts to Sheridan how she was involved in scanning Kosh to discredit the idea that Commander Sinclair had been involved, though that didn't go exactly as planned. She has not been heard from since she was reassigned to Earth following the incident in 2257. Garibaldi says she wasn't quite the same after she scanned him. Lisa comes to in Medlab and staggers to her feet, grabbing an instrument to hold Franklin at bay with whilst demanding to see all of the command crew together in one place because there's a traitor on board and she can't trust any of them. Two men have given their lives to get this information out. So they gather together and Lita explains that beyond a feeling she can't put into words, she only knows from Kosh what she's always maintained she knows, just what happened with the changing net attack. Six months ago she escaped the Psycor to Mars trying to get into Vorlon space, because ever since she scanned Kosh, she's been drawn there. Garibaldi points out they don't let anyone in, which Lita acknowledges, but she believes they'll let her in. Whilst on Mars, she needed to pay her way, and got involved with the revolutionary movement there. Clearly they wouldn't say no to having access to a telepath, and would pay well for that service. Seven days ago, one of their best operatives was killed returning from Syria plane with intelligence, as we saw. Garibaldi notes Psycho has an operation there. Lita then unveils the shocking truth that Psycho is running a sleeper program where personality is implanted as a mole so deeply that even a telepathic deep scan can't reveal its presence. The host has no knowledge of it being there, but it is always watching and listening. The implanted personality can only be awakened by a telepathically transmitted password, which will destroy the genuine personality and so activate the implanted personality. The code word for this individual is control. Critically, Lita has the password, so she is proposing to broadcast it to the command staff one at a time. No scans, no invasion of privacy, just the trigger word. Apparently this approach has been taken by the Corps in other Earth agencies as well. Sheridan says people will feel their loyalty is being questioned, ironically, and Lita acknowledges that he has no reason to trust her. It's interesting that she's even gone to him, because she's a fugitive from the Psycho. She must know that he's anti-core somehow. She also points out that lo loyalty isn't an issue, because whoever the mole is doesn't even know they've been programmed, but they will act in self-preservation via the mole personality. So as of right now, Lita is at risk, hence not wanting to be alone with any member of command staff. She just needs line of sight to be able to send the password. The command staff agree to discuss it, and Garibaldi has two guards take her to a holding cell. After she leaves, Ivanova says there's no way in hell she'll submit to it, because as we know, that 
could cause her difficulties given her low level telepathy. Sheridan meets with Delenn briefly as she wants to to discuss non food shipments and he's clearly disturbed by what he's just learned. The conversation takes an unusual detour onto butts and gaps in Delenn's vocabulary, but ends with a very tender moment where we again see that there is something beyond the formal relationship between Delenn and Sheridan now. The moment is interrupted by Garibaldi linking in, having completed his background checks on Lita and found no anomalies. Sheridan is still trying to make his mind up as to whether she might be a plant and feels Garibaldi doesn't know her well enough, pointing out that Control could have been his traitorous second who's already gone. Sheridan's going to sleep on it. Ivanova remains riled by the whole thing, as demonstrated by her taking her frustrations out on her quarter's furniture. Talia has had her first running water shower in a while, and Ivanova asks her if she ever met Lisa without telling her she's on the station now. She says she was close to her once, she was a year behind her at the academy, and that at one point she was in psychop training before changing her mind about it. She thought her a good person then, and doesn't think that would have changed. Talia says that the only person she implicitly trusts on the station is Ivanova. We also learned that in the core, telepaths are known as teeps, and telekinetics are teeks. Talia wakes seemingly alone in bed when Lita is being moved to better quarters by two security officers per Garibaldi's instructions. As she's being moved, the corridor lights drop and someone opens up on her escorts, taking them both down. Lita arms herself and returns fire before breaking away and hiding from the patrols looking for her. She remains unfound as Sheridan, Ivanova and Garibaldi meet. One guard survived, so they know there was a shooter which now means that Sheridan is leading more towards allowing the limited probe, always assuming they can get her into protective custody. Whilst the Ivanova continues to object, Sheridan says their careers and their lives hinge on them being able to trust one another, so it has got to get done. It turns out that Lita has other ideas about protection, as she reaches out to Delenn, who remembers her and agrees to meet with her. Ivanova tells Talia she went out to get some air last night, as she has, has a lot on her mind. Talia wants to help, but Ivanova isn't willing to open up about what's going on because it's very personal for her. Talia says she'll be there for her and leaves her quarters. Delenn lets Sheridan know that Lita's contacted her and is prepared to meet with them all at the same time, and Sheridan just needs to know where. Ivanova has let herself into Sheridan's quarters and reveals the truth about the lie she was speaking to Talia about, that she, like her mother, is a te telepath, albeit not a very powerful one. Her mother used to touch her mind, but she learned to block her, and sometimes to touch her, her mother's mind herself. So now Sheridan can fully grasp where her hostility to scans comes from. She says she's barely a P1, only ever reading her mother, but she can block scans and she knows when they're happening. Sheridan wants to find a way round it for her if he can, but he does note that Lita is not Psychor and Garibaldi trusts her, which is very unusual for him. Sheridan suddenly recalls his dream from All Alone in the Night in black and white flashback, where Ivanova asked him if he knew who she was. Now, of course, it turns out that he didn't. Clearly more than just a dream, and you don't generally recall that level of detail from a dream either. Just then, the call comes in from Delenn that Lita is ready to meet. Delenn brings Lita to the meeting, and whilst clearly curious, leaves. Lita begins her probes. Garibaldi goofs off and Ivanova's is suspended until later. Staff are then rolled past Lita one by one with no reactions to her probes. If one of her knows she's running out of time, as candidate after candidate is evaluated and dismissed. Sheridan continues to defend her right to the end as things become fraught, when she finally realises she has to sacrifice her secret to put herself beyond doubt. So she submits to the probe, but instinctively blocks it, which Lita notes out loud, meaning the whole command crew can now draw the, the inference. If one of her tries to open her mind and Lita gets through, apologising to her, if one of her tells her to go to hell, but she's clean. Just then, Talia walks into the conference room, not being Earth Force personnel, she hadn't been in the lineup. Lita sends the password with no warning, and after a moment there's a reaction, Talia grabbing her head, then Garibaldi's weapon, and getting her shot off before Garibaldi disarms her. She screams the core is mother, the core is father, threatening retribution against Lita for blowing her cover. Bye bye, Talia. Garibaldi, Sheridan and Franklin reflect on the fallout of the revelation. It exposes the Underground Railroad operation Franklin was running, 
but by the same token, they know about Psycho's sleeper program now. Garibaldi recalls that Kosh once captured certain thoughts from Talia for the future, so that may be something else that could help. The major plus side is that she doesn't know Ivana was a latent telepath, presumably, nor was she brought into their anti-conspiracy cell, which they wouldn't have been able to protect themselves from the, um, the outcome from, of. All they're left with is a Mexican standoff with the core, which means any future dealings with them are going to be decidedly difficult. If one of her tries to make peace with whoever Talia now is, but she is just spiteful and suggests that she was able to manipulate Talia's surface personality into getting closer to Ivanova in order to have a way into any information she wanted to access. Apparently, once Talia was unconscious, she was able to take control even without being activated. So it's rather like a mind wipe. A new personality substitutes itself for the original. If one of us says goodbye to the body, if not the mind. In the alien sector, Lita goes to see Kosh before she goes on the run again. She reveals that she kept a link to Kosh secret, that she listened to him sing to her through a tiny door locked away in her mind. She asks to see him again one more time before she goes, not knowing if she'll come back. He says nothing, but his encounter suit begins to open and we see bright light reflected in Lita's eyes. I sit here having watched this one through and I still can't make up my mind whether I like it or whether it's a bit of a clanger. You see, behind the scenes, Andrea Thompson, who played Talia Winters, was unhappy with the amount of screen time she, she was, well, not getting. So she decided to leave the show. If you've seen earlier videos or episodes, you'll recall that there'd been quite a lot of work on her character in that she had backstory with Ironheart and had been given enhanced abilities by him to the point where she was able to block out Psychops. Now, if Ironheart was that powerful, you'd expect him to have been able to detect this hidden personality and warn someone about it. Equally, if the latent personality can pass on information Talia learned, does it now have her telekinetic ability? That certainly wasn't evidenced here. And I wonder if Ironheart would actually have implanted the ability in such a way that only the original Talia could access it, knowing how manipulative Psycor can be. Still, it means that effectively that strand of storyline dead ends here. The secondary storyline here, however, is also very intriguing because Lita breaking away from the core and seeking out the Volons and having retained some link to Kosh, similar to the sort of link Sheridan once established, is completely new. Indeed, we can assume that she becomes only the second person in the series besides Delenn to see him outside his encounter suit because of this connection she has with him that she has kept secret. Remember, we haven't seen Lita for over a year in series time, so all of this is a complete bolt out of the blue, although JMS did plan for people leaving as far as he could. Of course, it was interesting for me watching this again, because I knew Talia was controlled from the outset, and you can see that on a couple of occasions here watching it again, there were points where in a body snatcher style, Talia's hidden self would have started screaming if Garibaldi or Ivanova had said too much too soon. They were very much on the brink. I think the problem with the episode is that somewhat inevitably in a sense the idea of there being a mole is simultaneously introduced and resolved because everyone significant gets probed even Ivanova so the likelihood is that Talia was the only sleeper and just like that she's gone it's certainly quite shocking but then if you start winding back you wonder if there are times like when she helped the underground railroad against Vesta her submerged personality would have overridden her because that would have been quite a big deal for the core Perhaps in that sense, the sleeper element wasn't as powerful and influential as it made itself out to be to Ivanova at the end of the episode. Interesting to see Mars, even very briefly, and also interesting to see a ranger there, clearly operational in the home solar system, but why on Mars, I wonder? Sinclair does have ties there, but he's fighting a very different war, so you would think that there has to be a connection there for a ranger to be involved on the ground. Not something that's mentioned in the episode, and the ranger may well have been the second fatality mentioned. It will be interesting to see how Ivanova comes out of this, because again, slightly jarringly, there's a suggestion in this episode that her relationship with Talia was quite advanced, beyond what we'd come to appreciate, perhaps. There's also the question around Sheridan's dream as well, of course, and the imagery in that dream, and what that might come to mean in the future, because we've only now just had sort of one element of it revealed rather than any more, so that'll be an interesting one to watch out for. So, 
It's all resolved quite abruptly, one way or another, and maybe that's just how it had to be in the circumstances. What did you think of this one? Final three of this season to come.